morning and welcome to Southern Maryland Focus. I'm Sharon Bell. With me today is Marty Madden from the Bay Net and Naomi Hurley also from the Bay Net. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about um, an incident that happened on July 10th in Calvert County. Uh, Adrian Hall was pulled over. According to the officers, he was going 76 miles an hour in a 55. According to Adrian, he was uh, pulled over because he was black. Um, according to the officers, they pulled him over. Uh, they asked him to wind down his passenger side window. He says that they were yelling at him the whole time he was on the phone with his wife. Um, eventually he did wind his window down, gave the officers his driver's license, went back to the car. After 20 minutes, Adrian calls 911 operator uh, for his emergency. Um, he felt as though he was being harassed. Other officers had also joined the original officer uh, in pulling him over. Um, anyways, with that being said, they brought in a canine searching for drugs. They arrested him for obstruction, which I'm not really sure what he was obstructing, but obstruction and resisting arrest. You guys want to talk about the whole well, incident? Well, I think, first of all, it, it raises this whole question about profiling. Is that still taking place uh, among uh, police? Uh, Mr. Hall uh, thinks it uh, is, and uh, apparently, and uh, the sheriff's office uh, feels that they had uh, uh, proper cause. Uh, Sheriff Evans issued a quick press release when uh, this uh, case was brought to light uh, on social media. And uh, the question is, who do you believe, I think? And uh, we have the technology now. It's in yeah, the uh, Were it's there the cams, vehicles. were there traffic cams being used? We don't know. We don't, we don't know at this point if there were even traffic cams being used. In this particular case, of course, Mr. Uh, Hall wasn't charged with any drug uh, violation. Uh, he was charged with uh, resisting arrest, obstructing, and of course, uh, uh, speeding. Reckless driving, reckless, he should have yes, reckless been driving. charged with reckless driving. Uh, Which actually, reckless driving is enough to have you arrested. Now, most officers do not arrest you for going over 20 miles an hour, but you can lose your driver's license immediately. Um, Biggest question is I don't understand is why would he have called 911? Why would he have been so afraid to call 911? I don't well, get it. There are a lot of factors to consider in this case, and like we said, we can't know the truth without seeing the dash cam, if there was a dash cam, because the account that Mr. Hall is giving is vastly different than the press release that was issued by the sheriff's office. You know, the press release is pretty cut and dry. It says, he was pulled over going 76. The K-9 unit alerted that there was a smell of narcotics, and he was subsequently arrested. But his account, you know, in his LinkedIn post, you can find that online. It is on the Baynet.com. On the original press release, there's a link to his LinkedIn post about it. Um, it says that he wasn't even speeding. It says he was in a line of cars. He gets pulled over, and the cops are hostile. He gets on the phone with his wife because, as many black people in our country have experienced or you know as the media says there is oh, there's a lot of police brutality there's a lot of profiling with african americans in the country so i mean mr hall might have very well been afraid got on the phone so somebody could hear what was going on and he probably didn't want to roll his window down all the way out of fear for his life and of course you know why would you fear an officer pulling you over for speeding in traffic in rush hour traffic at that well, I mean, just you can look at the Philandro Castile case that just happened earlier this year where he was pulled over for a routine stop. He alerted the office. It's all on video. I don't know if you heard about that case or not. The wife did put it on Facebook Live, actually. The Philandro or Philando alerted the cop he had a gun in his car. He, has, he had a permit to own that gun. And the cop immediately, as Philandro turned to get his permit or his driver's license, the cop shot him twice. And he died. And that went on Facebook Live. And I mean, you know, with these viral... Situations like this with cases like Mike Brown and Trayvon Martin and well Trayvon Martin wasn't with a police with a police officer But you know with all these situations with police brutality and violence a lot of black people are scared They fear for their lives, so they want to have somebody on the phone now calling 911 like you said I mean that's not illegal to do but one would kind of question you know Why wouldn't he call a friend 
Why would he get well, off the phone? Well, he was he was wife? already on the phone with his wife. Yeah, and then he gets off the phone and calls nine one one. And then in his account, you know, the nine one one operator. And the the officer took his driver's license, went back to his car, mm -hmm. and the cops been back there for twenty minutes. We've all been pulled over. Twenty minutes when you get pulled over is not very long to wait. Right. Yeah. So you you are there for at least a half an hour yeah. or longer sometimes mm -hmm. when you get pulled over. So a lot of things to me do not add up in his accountability of, of what happened. Um, I, I personally, I think that he pissed off the cops by, by dialing 911. I'm sure he did, yeah. yeah. And I think we have to look at uh, this also from a policeman's uh, point of view. There have been, there were like over 150, I think maybe 168 officers who were killed in the line of duty last year. The number keeps going up. Right. I mean, they're imperiled, and I think when they're uh, encountering a, uh, a motorist who is maybe not as cooperative as you would hope, um, they're putting themselves in harm's way. Exactly. So. exactly. It is true. I mean, yeah, when you put on that badge and you put on that uniform, you are risking your life every single day. There's no doubt of that, what they have to go through and what they face every single day. But even with that knowledge at hand, you can't turn, even if somebody is being rude to you, that doesn't give you the right, according to Mr. Hall's point of view, we don't know if it's true or not, but it still doesn't give them the right to be hostile and to, as he said, you know, attack him, his words. So we really don't know without yeah, seeing the dash cam footage he, he was telling the truth here. Yeah, he claims that when he finally got out of the car, which is like 30 minutes later, when the officer came back, he got out of the car, and they searched the car with the canine, found no drugs. He also claims that he's never done drugs, he's never drank, he's never smoked, he's never bought drugs. He claims all this crap. Um, but again, for whatever reason, that officer did bring the canine. Mm -hmm. He did search the vehicle. Uh, evidently, the, I don't know if the guy did actually resist arrest. Did the officer actually beat him up? Don't know, because... We need the footage. <laughs> it's what this guy is, is stating yep. in his post. Uh, I think, t personally, I think uh, he caused a lot of his own problem. He caused his own problem by just not listening to the officer. When you, when you get pulled over by a police officer, I don't care if you're black, white, purple, it makes no difference. He is still an officer of the law. And if he says, pull over, you pull over. If he tells you to wind your window down, which if you read your Maryland Motor Vehicle Manual, I believe it does state in there somewhere along the line, if the officer pulls you over, you are required to put your window down. I don't know if you have to put it down all the way. I think you just have to put it down enough to reach your well, driver's license and registration out the window. I don't really know. I don't know. But regardless, you need to respect that officer who has pulled you over and listen to what he's telling you to do. Mm -hmm. And if the guy is rude and he wants to stay on the phone talking to his wife, fine, keep your phone, put your phone down. But you gotta listen to what that cop is saying. If he had done that, and honestly, waiting 20 minutes, why he dialed 911 is beyond me, but I think if he had just waited another 10 minutes, he probably would have gotten his ticket and he would have been on his way. Mm -hmm. The situation is so ambiguous because it's literally he said, she said, or he said, he said, really, in this situation, because it's just so vastly different, these two accounts. So yeah, it's really going to come down different. to the speed, radar, what, if they have that not, if they have that data, and it's going to come down to the dash cam footage. So the question is, uh, how should this be handled? Should it be handled in the, port, uh, the court of public opinion, uh, where people watch the dash cam if they're what transpired. And I or, think the, the dash cam is only going to give you so much as well. Or, or does this go to a civil court or a criminal court? Well, and get tomorrow, uh, what's the date? August. August, August 29th. Right now he is scheduled to be in court. That could also get postponed. But anyways, your thoughts, um, questions, comments, we would welcome them. Um, just email news at the Baynet or respond to uh, this video when you see it up on our site. Thanks for uh, joining, and uh, we'll see you next time. On Point Pressure Cleaning will make your outdoor surfaces look like new. Revitalize your house, deck, fence, porch, sidewalks, patios, or dock, and protect your investment with a professional wash from On Point Pressure Cleaning. 
On Point Pressure Cleaning uses just the right pressure needed to properly wash all of your outdoor surfaces. We only use eco-friendly cleaning solutions so we can clean thoroughly without damaging the environment. Restore your home's beauty. Call On Point Pressure Cleaning today.